It's been over five years since the release of Pikmin 3, and almost three since Pikmin 4 was supposedly very close to completion. Surely an announcement can't be that far away, with some speculating one could still come this year. Either way, in today's video, we're going to look at three big things we want to see in Pikmin 4. As always, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Pikmin and gaming content, share this with your friends to grow the community, and enjoy the video. Firstly, one of the greatest features of the first two Pikmin games, Pikmin 1 especially, was the freedom in which you could explore many aspects of the map and largely choose your own path. Yes, certain puzzles required the use of a specific Pikmin you may not have acquired yet. For example, there's no way you can break the stone wall down at the impact site to claim the Positron generator from inside the Pearly Clam Clamp without yellow Pikmin, but the game felt open and there were many combinations of which you could go about collecting the missing parts in each level. Fast forward to Pikmin 3 and it seems this great quality was largely constrained. This is something which Pikmin 4 needs to include in order to bring back the magic of the first two games and make Pikmin 4 a fantastic experience. Secondly, we would like to see the return of caves, similar to those seen in Pikmin 2. Yes, I know caves didn't completely disappear in Pikmin 3, but they were so different from those which were such a fundamental part of the second game. Now, I know that many people are divided on the issue, but the basic idea of caves in Pikmin 2 were great. A challenging subpart of the map which would usually require preparation and lead to a boss fight at the end, with plenty of treasure to find along the way. Caves were a fantastic way to expand the game and create an interesting focus for many of your days on the surface. However, in reality there would need to be changes to make caves a valued part of a new Pikmin instalment. For starters, caves in Pikmin 4 should definitely be smaller in number than those in Pikmin 2. Instead of 3 or 4 caves per level, 1 or 2 would be a much more appropriate number. In addition to this, the caves would need to be more individual than they often felt in Pikmin 2, and a big part of that would mean less repetitive sub-levels and more unique puzzles to each cave. These alterations to the cave system from Pikmin 2 would make the caves in Pikmin 4 more interesting, more fun, and certainly less frustrating than those in the second game, and turn one of the poorly utilised features of Pikmin 2 into a great asset for Pikmin 4. In a second I will go on to discuss the biggest things we want to see in Pikmin 4, but first let's take a look at some other minor points which we believe would lead to a great game. Hopefully this section will convince you this isn't just a hate video about Pikmin 3. First on this smaller list is the new automatic way of plucking Pikmin introduced in Pikmin 3. This makes plucking Pikmin much less of an inconvenience and has proved a welcome small addition to the series. Another feature which looks to have worked effectively in Pikmin 3 is the go here function where you can set rally points for your captains. This is such a good feature because it adds a further tactical layer to the game and controlling multiple captains is fun. Furthermore, Whereas in Pikmin 2 it felt the access the player had to multiple captains was not utilised, Nintendo have effectively developed this in Pikmin 3. A month ago, Nintendo registered a series of new trademarks for the GameCube. In short, this has led to much speculation as to why Nintendo have done this, with one theory being we could see the early Pikmin games remastered after the recent success of things like the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy and the hype around the upcoming Spyro Reignited trilogy. Wouldn't it be amazing to play levels such as the Impact Site and the Forest of Hope on the Wii Switch as part of a Pikmin 4 release? Let me know your thoughts down below. Finally, Olimar needs to be one of the main characters in Pikmin 4. He is the pillar stone of the Pikmin series and the small part he played in Pikmin 3 was just disappointing. Maybe this is for nostalgic reasons, but Olimar is just as much as the Pikmin franchise as the Pikmin are. As we fell in love with Pikmin in the early 2000s, we fell in love with Olimar and his story. We rebuilt the dolphin with him part by part in Pikmin 1, and we retrieved every piece of treasure with him in Pikmin 2. I just struggle to feel the same connection with Alf, Brittany and Charlie. I can't stress enough how important the main protagonists and games are to me. I can't remember a game where I've fallen in love with a story when I felt little for the main character. Olimar's return would certainly eliminate this risk and massively enhance Pikmin 4 for me. So there's our main wish list for Pikmin 4, but we want to hear yours too, so be sure to comment below. Also remember to like the video and subscribe for updates and content surrounding Pikmin 4 and for other things video game related. 
Finally, I just want to say that some of the ideas within this video have been inspired from other videos across YouTube, so make sure you have a look around to formulate your own opinions. Specifically, I found myself nodding along to a lot of the points that the sneaky spy made in his video titled, Let's Talk What I Hope For In Pikmin 4. This video was also incredibly useful for information on Pikmin 3, which I haven't played a great deal of. Links to this video and all the other sources I used are available in the description, so make sure you go and give them a watch. Thank you though for watching, and I will see you in the next video.